So in our last video, we looked at how to slow down this ball towards the ends of its travel um, using a traditional animation technique um, called in-betweening. So we just went in between the two positions, and we offset the in-between drawing, or the breakdown drawing, if this was traditional animation, um, towards the ending position so that it would be slower on this side and faster on this side. Now this is, although this is a traditional method, it's more of a primitive method in CG, we have something called the graph editor which can help us map out motion mathematically and help us make these sort of minute adjustments very, very powerfully. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Animation Graph Editor. So Window Animation Editor Graph Editor. Okay, here it is. Uh, I'll go ahead and shrink it down uh, to about this size just for comparison's sake. Um, if I click on our first ball up here, you can see that it's graphed the motion of this ball, meaning that this dot here is our first position at frame 1, you can see the red line moves along with the playhead at the bottom of the screen. And then this dot here is our second keyframe um, at frame 24. And you can see, indeed, the same numbers appear down here, frame 1 and frame 24. So by linear motion, you can clearly see what I mean now. This is a linear graph. It's just a line. It's going from one point straight to the other point as if drawn by a ruler. Okay? If I select the second object, we can see something a little bit different happening. Although all of these lines are still straight, and I'll go ahead and maximize that. You can see all of these lines are still straight. The overall effect is one of curving at this point. And in fact, if I wanted to adjust this to be a much nicer uh, ease in animation, then I could adjust these dots here in the graph, and the effect would be represented back out here in the screen. Let's go ahead and do it with the object first, though, to show how par powerful this graph is just to have as a reference. okay. So I want this to ease in in a very nice smooth way and I can see that my adjustments are leaving something to be desired right now. So here on, fra on frame 12 I'm going to adjust this ball until I like the shape of this graph more. So if I push this ball over to the right a little bit and I key selected we can see that the graph adjusted when I did that. So I'm going to do it some more. I'm going to push it over to the right some more to get a more extreme adjustment, key selected. Okay, so I need to adjust this position now. I'm 18. Push that to the right. Key selected. Looks like it could afford to go more. Key selected. So that's a lot nicer shape already. That nice smooth transition down. Uh, if I zoom in, and I can use the same controls as you do in the Maya window. So Alt, Middle Mouse, uh, roll up and roll down to adjust this position, I can take a look and see that, yeah, this is a very nice um, transition. Maybe this one could be a little bit farther. So I'm going to scoot that over just a tiny bit, key selected, and yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's a nice, smooth graph now, as smooth as it can be with hand keyed positions. So let's go ahead and see that played back. So it's even more pleasing now because I've managed to use the graph as a reference to show me um, exactly how the ball was moving. But we can use this graph even more powerfully. We can model most of the motion within the graph. Um, I would caution you that if the graph is confusing to you in a certain circumstance or if you can't make the object do what it is that you want with the graph in a certain circumstance, just put the object in the position by hand, frame by frame. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's a great way to get around the limitations of the software sometimes. And it's great to remember that the software should never dictate how you animate. You should dictate how the objects animate yourself. So here I'm going to create polygon primitives, another sphere, just like we did before. I'm going to go ahead and slide that up underneath these previous two spheres. And this time we're going to use the graph to model the motion. So for this first position, we're going to go ahead and key selected, just like we did for other objects. On frame 24, our number was negative 17, which I'm going to paste in, hit enter, and then key selected. And those are all of the keyframes we're going to need to model this motion. Right now it's identical to our linear ball up at the top there. Now I'm going to use the graph editor to adjust this motion so that it's smoothly transitioning inward, very much like this graph, only completely smoothly instead of discreetly linear between these points. Okay. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to left-click and drag around this first, this second point here. Okay, 
you see that we get these handles. Um, I'm going to go ahead and maximize it because we don't need to even see the ball for this portion of it. So we get these purplish, pinkish handles, which I can highlight by left clicking and dragging around either one of these handles. Okay? Um, and I can move when they're highlighted yellow with my middle mouse button dragging. So middle mouse and drag. Also, by the way, we can change the values of the keys themselves by middle mouse dragging them. But for now, let's just leave it where it is so that we're not changing our animation too much. All right. So for the second point, left click and drag around the point. Left click and drag around the left hand handle. And since I want this to become a smooth arc like this, so it's slowing down, I'm going to drag this handle downward until it's horizontal. It doesn't have to be exactly horizontal, but we do have to be mindful of this line itself. Okay? The way that you read this graph is that you have time going horizontally down at the bottom. We can see that marked down here, frame 1 through frame 24. And we have value marked vertically. So here's the value 0 motion. Since we end up at negative 17, we've got negative 17 down here. So what that means is that if we have a horizontal line on this graph, we have no change over a lot of time. If we have a steep line, and we can never have an exactly vertical line unless we're using stepped tangents, that means that we have almost instantaneous change. So something that's, that's moving so fast that it takes no time at all for it to change. Okay? So the steeper the line is, the faster the object is going, the more shallow the line is, the slower the object is going. So I'm going to adjust this left hand dot as well. So I'm going to highlight this keyframe, highlight its handle on the right hand side, middle mouse drag so that it's steeper at the beginning and shallower at the end. So we've got this nice arc. And if I want this to be a little bit nicer, I can pull it down just a tiny bit, make sure that it doesn't, uh, the line itself does not drop below the level of this final resting point. Uh, or I can adjust this some more. And that's pretty nice. Okay, that's a nice sweeping line. Let's take a look at what that should look like. So I'm going to play this. You can see that it's moving even faster than the second ball at the beginning and slowing down very, very smoothly towards the end of the playback. Um, this is a really nice effect, but it's not as nice as we can make it. We can make it even nicer than this. Okay, let me show you how. I'm going to stop the playback, just rewind there, and bring back up my graph editor. Now, the reason we hit that weighted tangents button in the beginning was so that we could free these tangent weights. See, right now I can adjust this angle, but I can't move the handle itself. I can't stretch it out across the stage, and I want to be able to do that for maximum control of my animation. So I'm going to highlight this whole line. I'm going to come up to Curves weighted tangents. You always have to select the whole line either at the beginning of your animation process or whenever you want to enable these so that we can make these tangents weighted. Okay, so right now they're weighted but they should not be able to move yet. We also have to free their tangent weight. So I'm going to select the whole line again and then this button right here is free tangent weight. And You can see that the little dots that were solid are now open and I can move this anywhere I want now. See how it resists being a vertical line? Um, it knows that that's impossible and it won't model that sort of change. But now that I've got free tangent weights, I can move this line anywhere I want. Um, so I'm going to make a very extreme ease in like this. So you can see it's an even more pronounced uh, jump and then an even more pronounced slowdown towards the end. So we should start to get what is looking like some very cartoony motion in this uh, ease in. And indeed, that's exactly what we see. Some very cartoony motion going from very fast to very slow. 